Qualcomm is coming after Apple and Intel with their new Snapdragon X Elite chip. Now we are here in beautiful San Diego to check this chip out and get a lot more details about it. Not too long ago, I made a full video showing what we know about it, but now we have a lot more info. So I'm gonna be sharing some performance comparisons with you guys, as well as some extra details and some very impressive info. We spent most of today at Qualcomm headquarters and it was really cool to see how passionate all of the engineers and different members of the team are about this chip and their dedication in making a big impact in the Windows Windows PC laptop market. They are serious about this and they are in it for the long run, which is great because years in the past, we tested out some of the older SQ1, SQ2 chips. And even though Qualcomm was trying, Windows was not really helping them out with the ARM versions. But now from what we hear, Microsoft is taking ARM for Windows much more seriously. And that's gonna be great to have some competition for AMD and Intel as well as for Apple with their own Apple Silicon. One huge focus that we heard about is AI and neural processing. Of course, AI is all the rage these days. So at first I kind of dismissed it, but these numbers are impressive. Intel's new Ultra 7 155H gets 10 tops, which is trillions of operations per second for performance, while the new X Elite gets 45 trillion operations per second. Now, Apple's new M3, and Apple's been focusing on MPUs for years, that is at 18 tops. So right there, you guys see that the X Elite is getting more than double the performance of the new M3. We also got a few benchmarks that were specific in comparison to the new Intel chip, and one was running 7-zip for compression. Here, the Intel chip took 21.1 seconds compared to 18.8, with the X Elite. And of course, this is a task that's been done for a long time with X86 processors. But now Qualcomm is here to really destroy the X86 chip once and for all. And Vadim made many videos over the years, even before the M1 launched, that ARM is coming to destroy Intel's X86. And we see this finally happening with this new X Elite chip. Now we also had Visual Studio Code compilation and the difference here is massive. The new Intel chip took 63.5 seconds compared to just 30.3 seconds. That is more than twice as fast at compiling code. Now, of course, this has been updated to be able to do this quick. And we saw with the M1 chip when that came out, it was so much better than the uh, x86 Intel Mac. So this is nice that it's happening. And of course, it's gonna use a lot less power. And that was another major focus point during the presentations we had that not only are you gonna get a lot better performance, you're gonna get way better battery life as well. And that's what we are excited about for the Windows laptops. Some Windows laptop users and PC users actually bought MacBook Airs because it's a great overall machine and the battery life is incredible. And now we're gonna have some great Windows laptop competition to Apple's MacBooks. And to prove this point further, let's look at CPU performance with Cinebench. Intel's Ultra 7 scores 737 points in the Cinebench 2024 compared to 950 for the X Elite. And the M3 chip scores 712 and that is with the one that has a fan in the 14 inch. So right there, the CPU performance is not only better than M2, it is better than M3. And I have to point out that this is using the 23 watt version. And the way the X Elite platform is made, you have one chip and then depending on if it's going in a thin and light laptop or a thicker one, they could choose their wattages and be able to customize it. Now, we had some leaked benchmarks before from an 80 watt version and that was absolutely insane. And we saw a whole back room where they were stress testing these chips and there was one with multiple fans, this huge heat sink. 
And if you're looking at the 80 watt version, we actually have some performance results from that. But I also have to point out that at 23 watts, this chip is actually competing with the M3 Pro and not the M3. And there, the M3 Pro scores 1,010 points. So it is a little bit better, but of course this is a brand new three nanometer chip and the wattages are right there very close. Now that 80 watt configuration, that actually scores 1,220. So it is beating out the M3 Pro, but this is more like a very high clocked uh, chip that is designed just to get some high benchmark numbers. I don't think we're gonna see an 80 watt version in a laptop, but it's still cool to see them pushing the performance of what is capable in the system. Now, of course, previously we also talked about this whole chip design um, coming from Qualcomm acquiring Nuvia, which were which had a couple former Apple chip employees, designers that were able to do it. So this is gonna be the first chip, the X Elite, that is using technology from those former Apple employees starting Nuvia. And now let's talk about graphics. And that's an area where Apple has been dominating because most laptop chips that are all in one without discrete graphics, well, they're not very powerful. And they shared some numbers with us from GFX Bench. And in Aztec Ruins normal tier, the Intel gets 153 FPS compared to 295 for the X Elite. Now, they showed off a chart with M2 getting the same exact score, and the Apple M1 and M2 were so much po more powerful than AMD's and Intel's integrated graphics. Well, we also have the results from the M3, and that gets 324 frames per second, so it is more powerful, but not by that much. Now, we had a Q&A session, and one person asked about more powerful graphics options, kind of like you'd see on an M3 Pro and M3 Max. And Qualcomm said this is the beginning of um, their journey with these chips. Um, they said they can't share too much. We're gonna have to wait longer and they're exploring different things. But this focus on this chip is to have a mainstream chip that could do a lot of things. So it can do gaming and we did see multiple demos. We saw Witcher and some other games. But in those tests, they're running at 1080p at lower settings. So it's definitely not a gaming chip. But one thing that was mentioned is that there is no limitation as far as using discrete graphics. So we could see a future where you can have a Snapdragon chip along with uh, discrete graphics that are gonna be great for things like video editing, uh, gaming, and thicker laptops that use more power. So that is really cool to see that you're not being limited to whatever is on the actual SOC itself like we have with Apple chips. We also got results from 3DMark's Wildlife Extreme. Here the Intel got 32.7 FPS and the Snapdragon got 39. 9.1 and the M3, although the graphics for compute isn't that much better than M2, uh, with gaming like this, it got 48. So the graphics for gaming is more powerful than the X Elite. Now we also got a demo with DaVinci Resolve and they are working with Qualcomm on making optimizations. And as time has been going on, more things have been switched over to using the NPU instead of the graphics because it sips power and it could do so much faster. And one demo that they showed off here, this was tracking, which has to go frame by frame. And the Intel latest chip was doing this at at three frames per second compared to seven frames per second on the Snapdragon X Elite. So that's more than twice the performance. Of course, when we get these laptops in, we're gonna be doing a lot more testing like this. So make sure you guys are subscribed below so you guys don't miss out on those detailed real world scenarios. Now we also got web browsing performance and it is pretty impressive. In speedometer 2.1, the Intel gets 376 FPS compared to 438. So that's a big improvement, but the M3 gets about 400 and 90 in Safari, so it is still a little bit better. And we actually ran Speedometer 3.0, the new version. There the Intel gets 19.6 compared to 22.1, and the M3 gets 
2. So I will say this chip is doing excellent for web browsing. It's going to be nice and snappy. And that's also because the single core performance is really good. So in Geekbench, the single core score is 2774 compared to 2401 for the Intel. And of course, the M3 is 3,174 with three nanometer, but this X Elite is beating out the M2 chip, which came out not long ago. So the single core performance is great. And then in multi-core, we have a score of 14, 1027 compared to 13,001 and then 11,889 for the M3. Now, of course, uh, the X Elite and the Intel chip is using more power than what the M3 does. It's 23 watts for the X Elite. So looking at the M3 Pro, that gets 13,692. So in Geekbench, the X Elite is beating out the M3 Pro. Um, that is very impressive for their first really serious chip. So overall, we are very happy that they are taking this seriously. They're planning a lot of things, both in terms of software applications, optimizations, and future chips that are gonna come out. And this is gonna be really the end for x86 Intel chips and a really good competition for Apple. It's gonna keep Apple uh, working harder instead of just stagnating. And that is excellent for everybody. So you guys let us know your thoughts on this brand new chip from Qualcomm down in the comment section below. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.